Hi there friends, pretty much every manuscript submission requires a cover letter to submit it to the journal as well. And this is what we're going to talk about in this video. First, why you should care about this cover letter, then some general points about writing the cover letter, and finally, the various points to include in the, such a cover letter. So first of all, why should you care about the cover letter, other than that it's typically required? Well, it is really the first thing a journal editor sees from your paper. They will read that cover letter. Now, normally journal editors will not make a decision on your paper without also having read your paper, of course, but your cover letter is a very good opportunity to make a good first impression. It's a great opportunity to succinctly explain why your paper is important in your particular field. So the importance of such a cover letter typically increases with the perceived prestige of a journal. If a journal um, does a lot of desk rejections, so rejecting papers without sending them to formal review, then often it is worthwhile spending more time in a very good, in crafting a very good cover letter that really highlights the importance of your work. And as I said, the cover letter is typically required, so you might as well get it right. And here first are some general points on writing a cover letter. The first one is, of course, as always, <laughs> refer to the instruction for authors because often journals differ quite a bit in the information that they expect in the cover letter, for example. Do they want reviewer names in the cover letter? Do they want a specific statement to be included in the cover letter? And so on and so forth. So it's important to get that point right by just quickly looking at the instructions to authors. The second point is don't make that too long. I would recommend staying on one page, maybe one and a half pages, but really don't make it any longer than that because um, I think the editor will run out of patience if you give them too much text. And so make sure that you just convey the most important and salient points about your paper. Also, don't just repeat your abstract. I mean, the abstract is also available for the editor to look at but use this cover letter more to emphasize really the <laughs> unique selling points of your paper, why it's unique, why it's special, given the background in this particular field. Now, having said that, don't <laughs> over embellish your cover letter with uh, superlatives and claims of this being the first to do something. I mean, keep it still in a, in a neutral tone and just point out what is special about your paper without resorting too much to exaggerated claims, because I think that reflects badly <laughs> on um, you. So basically, keep neutral language, but stating very clearly what's special about the paper. And then, of course, check for typos, as always. Um, make sure you get the journal name right and also make sure you get the editor name right if you're addressing an editor by name. So what to include in your cover letter? The first is who you address the cover letter to, to the journal staff. So ideally, you know this person by name because you have gone to the web page. And so rather than writing dear editor in chief, you would address the letter to dear professor so-and-so, who's the editor in chief of this journal. Or if, it's, um, if you've already had a conversation with an editor about the submission, then address it to this person. But it's generally nicer, <laughs> I think, if you um, address a person by name. Don't write dear sir or madam or even worse, dear sirs. You know, if you don't want to look up who the editor is, then just say dear members of the editorial team or something like this. But don't use dear sir or madam. So mention the journal then, the paper type, and the title of your paper. This is essentially your first sentence right there. So we are submitting um, our paper entitled so-and-so for consideration as a regular article in Awesome Journal. So this would be the first sentence, basically. Next comes then a super brief background section that just puts your paper in context. So what is this basically on and in what general realm is this paper? What, what problem does it try to solve and why is this an important problem? This is super basic information on the background of this paper. Then, and this is where you can maybe reuse some text from the abstract, very briefly say, what your paper has found, the most salient points of your paper. Emphasizing what's special and new about it 
and why people should be interested in it. This is basically the hard piece of your cover letter, right? Then after this, you should write why this is a good fit to this journal. You know, this would be, for example, this result would appeal to a broad audience of um, ecologists, plant ecologists, microbial ecologists, soil ecologists, global change biologists, for example. And um, we know this is the readership of your journal or something like this. And um, basically explain why this journal would be a great fit. This is particularly important for journals of higher prestige that are um, publishing more generally rather than a very highly specialized journal where I think it's pretty clear why it would be a good fit for that journal. But if you're writing for a journal with a broader audience, then I think it's very nice to make clear why this result of this paper would be really appealing to a broader audience. Then generally, I think it's good practice to have a statement that this paper has not been submitted elsewhere, um, is not under consideration in, um, at another journal, for example, and that all authors have agreed to being so named. And this is often also just check boxes in the online submission system, but I think it's good to have just a standard sentence that you can reuse for basically every cover letter, just like one of these. And then you end with, we look forward to hearing you about this paper. Don't write statements in there that say like, we look forward to hearing from you soon about this paper because it formulates an expectation and it's perceived as impolite. But basically end it with a neutral statement like this. And then, you know, depending on if you submit it online or on a, basically on a letterhead, then signature, um, the corresponding author for all co-authors and then potentially the corresponding address unless it's already in your letterhead. And that's all. I think it's pretty straightforward, but um, it's worth doing a cover letter carefully and well because it really determines that very first impression. So I wouldn't take this too lightly <laughs> and just um, give it the effort it deserves. I think it's time well spent. And with that, good luck with your submission. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one. Bye.